this opulent table clock uh, was made in about 1695 by Henry Massey. And Henry was part of the family of Huguenots who came over with their father, Nicholas, and his two brothers uh, to escape religious persecution. It's an hour striking clock, uh, but it has a strike silent here, so you can switch it off at night. And then you have the pull chord repeat to sound off what the time is at night. It's very rare for a table clock um, with a short pendulum um, to have a seconds hand. And here you've got the seconds hand and the seconds dial counterbalanced with the adjustment dial for the regulation of the pendulum above. So that again, it's the, the design uh, shows the Huguenot influence of uh, making it look attractive as well as functional. Henry got into trouble with the clockmakers company for employing alien apprentices um, in July 1692 and wonder whether the apprentices worked on this wonderful clock. I think the design and the finish of the clock shows the Huguenot influence with the contrast of the uh, beautiful silver against the red of the tortoiseshell. Uh, the case has these wonderful silver mounts, the silver handle, the silver mouldings, uh, the mouldings around the dial and the edging in silver, the silver feet. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful clock. The back door opens to reveal this lovely, lovely engraving on the whole of the false back plate. You can see that there's, n there's no arbors or uh, the ends of arbors or clicks, winding clicks, just these wonderful Arcanthus engraving scrolls. And even the suspension for the pendulum is then covered by the apron there, which matches the engraving of the main back plate. And hidden in the engraving is this lovely vase, and on the base is a devil face looking at you. There's a hold fast for the pendulum, which we can release and then it will go out of the way and then set the pendulum going and it's a lovely quiet tick. So all in all, it's the most advanced mechanical clock as well as being one of the most beautiful clocks. So I've taken the movement out of the case so that you can see some of the details which um, we'll give you in close up later. The, first of all, the regulation dial here, which regulates the height of the pendulum. The second dial, which is most unusual on a verge short pendulum plot. Um, you've got the calendar and the strike, no strike switch here. So that at night you can turn it off and stop it striking. You can see the peal of six bells here with the bass bell and the top one and the uh, whole peal in between all mounted on these six arbors. And the, then the pull to tell the time at night, you can see the cord wrapped around this uh, pulley, which cocks the spring and then releases it. So that's three quarters past one. So it's 10 to two. You can see the six bell arbors here with the clappers mounted off them. And you can see the little pulley here with the repeat cord. So when I pull it, it revolves. And then when I release it, you can see the peal of bells take place. So this is the no strike position, whereas if I move the lever down, it allows the rack mechanism to drop and to strike the hour as necessary. But when it's in the no strike position, it locks the striking mechanism at night so it doesn't sound. 
So a bird's eye view of the pull repeat, you can see the cord wrapped around the pulley. When I pull it, it cocks the mechanism. When I release it, then away it goes. One, two, three. It's three quarters past one. So the pendulum is hung on a lever, which is pivoted in the center here. And it has a cam at this end, which as the lever moves up and down, then it lifts and lowers the pendulum. So as I move the adjustment dial, it will lift the pendulum, making it go faster. If I move it in the other direction, it lowers the pendulum, making it go slower. It's all these features plus the beautiful case and all the decorations in silver and the tortoiseshell that make this a really interesting, unique clock.